Hi, I'm Paul May. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of BuzzStream. Hi, Paul. So tell us a little about your business. So BuzzStream uh, provides tools for marketers to help them manage and build relationships with online influencers. Uh, so typically we're selling to PR professionals, search marketing professionals, either in agencies or in-house. Uh, typically they've moved from driving most of their traffic and most of their leads from traditional um, sources to more social media. And as that world has fragmented, um, and as your influencers have moved from you know five or ten influential publications to potentially thousands of bloggers across many different vehicles, um, managing that becomes a challenge, and that's really what our tools are focused on. Yeah, I can see a big need for that. So give us give us an example of a success story or something that you've heard about with one of your customers where they've used your product for for huge effect. Boy, let me think if I can use names. I know some of our yeah. Um, yeah, just generalize, really. So um, I'll talk about some different industries where we've got uh, customers in different industries and how they use the product. So we have two products, one focused on search marketing and, and particularly SEO. Uh, and we have a number of customers who are uh, in fields like travel or services where they have uh, it's really important for them to own long tail search terms geographically oriented. So, you know, find X in Austin, Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, etc. cetera. Um, and being able to uh, own those terms, the key to it is um, building links um, to folks in all of those different locations. Managing that, um, what we're finding is, is that there are, uh, we've got people who are using it to manage upwards of, you know, 50, 100,000 potential link partners. Wow. Being able to reach out to many, many more of them than they were before. The net result is is that uh, uh, reach out to more people, rank higher, more revenue. It's it's a direct line for these companies. Yeah. So talk a little about link building for people that may not be familiar with it, um, why it's important, and so on. Yeah. So seventy percent, um, depending on who you talk to, seventy percent of of Google's what what drives how you rank in Google search uh, search rankings is driven by off page factors. So there's on-page, you know, your site architecture, what keywords you have on your site, and off-page are things like how many people are linking into you. There's other factors, but that's the biggest driver of how you rank today. Um, so if somebody links into your site, Google views that as a vote for quality on your site. The more links you have, simplifying here, the more links you have, the more you rank. Um, in the old days, the way people would get link links is they would game the system. If you uh, do things like buy links from people, um, set up link farms where they would get links from Estonia and the Ukraine and all these places, that stuff still goes on. But if you want to bet on anything, bet on Google getting smarter and smarter about detecting real links um, and knowing whether it's from somebody who is really valuable um, versus fake links. So that's forced people to focus really on building these relationships and reaching up to people in more genuine ways. Um, which then means, okay, how do I do this in a way where I can have really broad outreach but reach out, in, reach out to people in a very personalized way? That's the real challenge. So, so it's buying traffic on Google or influencing p people, bloggers, and so on using a product like Budstream, right? Uh, buy, I would say, well, you mean, let me back you. When you say buying, that's yeah. more the PPC route. It's right. more the... The search route, uh, there's two ways you can go. You can, you can do PPC and buy uh, your way into Google's rank or list on those rankings, or you can go do it organically. Getting those links gives you the uh, organic search results. Wonderful. Um, so talk a little about the differences in some of the startups that you see in Austin as a startup CEO and sort of the commonalities between different companies and things that maybe distinguish maybe bigger companies from smaller ones. So I think Austin's going through a bit of a transformation. Um, you know, over the last, if you looked at it in 2000, and I, I came to Austin, or back to Austin in 2002, and when I came here, if you looked at how companies were being funded, it was your typical big VC-backed ventures, typically Austin Ventures here in town, which is, you know, great fund. 
Um, but what we've been seeing over the last couple of years is increasingly more companies that are either bootstrapped or microfinanced or never intend to raise more than it tops a million dollars. And that's created a community that is, um, I think, really interesting. And you're seeing lots of new types of companies. And I think it's creating a community of startup founders and CEOs who are all leaning on each other to learn how to go do this in interesting ways. And I think that mix along with um, people having the experience with the, the AV-backed companies um, or people coming out of Dell and things like that is, I think it's creating some interesting, I think Austin will evolve in some interesting ways as a result of that. Yeah, it's a good point because there are a lot of companies that have opted not to take venture capital in Austin yeah. but are doing interesting and bigger things than, than you would think were possible with that mm -hmm. limited amount of money. What, what are some of the challenges that you face as a result of, of that uh, where you're maybe under-resourced for the things that you would ordinarily do but you're capable enough to do things anyway? I think the biggest challenge um, that we face in Austin right now is um, is just the bench of expertise. We have um, we have a lot of people here who have come out of venture back companies, know how to build those kinds of companies, particularly if it's focused on enterprise software. Um, but as you move to selling down to either consumer software or selling departmentally to businesses, um, I think that's something that people in Austin are still learning. There's starting to be some some uh, some success stories that I think are going to bear fruit in the community at large over the next couple of years. You're seeing SolarWinds and SpiceWorks and uh, you know people coming out of even bigger companies like NetQoS or excuse me NetIQ, um, who now have experience selling those those uh, you know still business to B two B services, but selling departmentally smaller deals, etc. And I think that's going to bear fruit, but I think that's a challenge today. All right, so. Um... Let's look in the crystal ball a year from now. Where would you like to be with BuzzStream? Ooh, where would we like to be with BuzzStream? Um, hmm. Challenge. Uh, let me think for a second. <laughs> so where I'd like to see the company go over the next couple of years is, uh, so we've delivered really our first uh, version of both our SEO product and our product for PR and social media marketing. We're starting to get a ton of feedback from people to see where the product needs to go. From a product perspective, I'd like to see us keep following that and, and just let the customers drive the product where it needs to go. From a sales and development perspective, or from a team perspective, we have a long vision of this. We, when we started this company, we were thinking in terms of this is probably something we'll be doing for seven years. We, we didn't have the short-term focus. So two years from now, if we have a small team of developers um, and along with some outsourcers, a small sales team to start driving it, and we've reached the point to where the product, uh, right now people have to buy on it solves this problem and I see the vision. If we've delivered to the vision and now we can have a sales team go out there and just scale it, I'll feel very happy with where we are. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thanks again for your time, Paul. We appreciate it and good luck. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.